So let's talk about synthetic division. You've learned long division and it works, works quite well. Nothing wrong with long division. But what if there was, uh, a, and I use synthetic division all the time if it's possible. There are sometimes you cannot use synthetic division, but if you can, I recommend it, right? But again, it's your choice if this is something you want to do. So when we're doing long division, you know, we set up our, you know, a little thing where we had the X minus two, and then we put the two X four, et cetera, et cetera, under it, right? The difference for synthetic division is that we use a little matrix this time. A matrix is just a table, right? If you've seen a spreadsheet, you know it has rows and columns. We're gonna do exactly that right now. So the number of rows and columns depends on the particular question that you're doing. So I'm just gonna put a couple in because I'm not really sure how many I'm gonna need just yet. What do I do now is I need three rows. The number of columns depends on, like I said, what you're doing. Now, on the side over here, in the very first, uh, it's sorry, in the middle row, whatever is the constant that you had here, in this case, it's x minus 2. I'm going to put the minus 2 here on the side. All right. Along the top row, I'm going to put all the coefficients that I had in the original question. It's 2x4 minus 3x minus 5. So I'm going to put all of the coefficients and the constant in that top row. So the 2 goes here. But I'm actually going to put a 0 next. Can anybody see why I'm putting a 0 next? Why, why, why I need to put a 0 next? Okay, let's see. Who thinks they know why that is? Jeremiah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Jeremiah, you wanted to say what? Not Jeremiah, sir. Janiah. No, Janiah. Janiah had her hand up as well. Two X four minus three X minus five. You're thinking that it is a quadratic. It's not a quadratic, it's a quartic function because the highest power there is X to the power of four. Well, you might be able to. In fact, we're going to be talking about factoring later on, but you can't factor it with any of the techniques that you've learned so far. It's not like what you did back in grade 10, Is that if that's what you're thinking. You can't factor it like that. No, 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 no. Okay, so I'm going to put a zero there. I'm going to put another zero in because exactly what Jeremiah just said. I have an X4 term. I don't have an X cubed term. So yes, he's right. Using a term placeholder makes sense. I don't have an X squared term but I do have an X term, so I'm gonna put the minus three in, and then I also have a minus five at the end. Okay, so zero X cubed, thank you, Joel. And then I have a zero X squared, then I have a minus three X and a minus five. Okay, so here come the steps for synthetic division. You notice that there are no X's here at all, right? That's what synthetic division does. It eliminates all the X's. First step, let me change the color to show you what that first step kind of looks like. I'm going to put a line that comes from, why is it not red? Oh, I need to press red. Oh, jeez. Okay. So I'm going to put a line that's coming down here, right, in red. I'm going to go back to black. Okay. And I'm going to bring down the two. So the first step is to just simply bring down whatever that first number is. You don't have to do anything except bring that number down. Then here comes the steps now. I need to get rid of this thing. Okay. The next step is to multiply this number that I'm pointing to here times the bottom number and put the result in this box. I'll say that again. Take the number that's in the middle, multiply it by the bottom number, put that number in the next empty box in the middle. So minus two times two is minus four. And then I'm going to subtract down, meaning the top row minus the middle row. So 0 minus minus 4, of course, is 0 plus 4, which is 4. I'm going to do the same thing again. Multiply this number that I'm pointing to here by this number. Of course, that's minus 8. Put that number here in the middle row. Subtract down again. So 0 minus minus 8, of course, is 0 plus 8, which is 8. 
I'm going to keep doing that. Minus 2 times 8 is minus 16. So I'm going to put that in the middle row. I'm going to subtract down. So it's minus 3 plus 16, which, of course, is 13. And we'll do this one more time. Minus 2 times 13 is minus 26. Then we're going to subtract down. So 5 minus, <clears throat> excuse me, 5 minus or plus 26, because you're minusing a minus, is, of course, 21. Okay? So, okay, he says back. So, what do those numbers mean? What do I do with these numbers? Well, let me remind you that you divided an x4 by an x1. What you should expect is that your, your, your result should be a cubic function because you divided a quartic function by a degree one function. So if you take x to the power of four divided by x, you should end up with an x cubed term, x cubed uh, function. So these are your coefficients and constant of your result. It's gonna be two x cubed, because I dropped a degree, plus four x squared plus eight x plus 13. So that last number is a constant. What do you think that 21 represents? What, do you, what would you guess that 21 represents? It's the remainder. There you go. So the remainder is 21. So if I wanted to write this in quotient form, it would be 2x cubed plus 4x squared. And we're going to plus x plus 8x plus 13 plus 21 over x minus 2. Remember, the restriction is that x cannot be equal to 2. Okay, let me remind you of that. That's your restriction. x cannot be equal to 2. Now, before I try this out another time with this one, what we're going to do is we're going to test this out and make sure that this polynomial division look alike, we call it synthetic division, actually does give us back that dividend. Because if it doesn't, it's no good. Remember, the, the, the division statement is the x minus 2, we'll, we'll ignore this for now. The x minus 2, let me, let me give myself you know, as much room as I need. The x minus 2 is being multiplied by the quotient. And this part here, remember, is the quotient. So 2x cubed, I'll erase this thing here. That's kind of getting in the way a bit. All right. So 2x cubed plus 4x squared plus 8x plus 13. And then we're going to add on that 21. So if what I did is right, remember, no, I should get back this 2x4 minus 3x minus 5. If it's wrong, then it means I made a mistake. So let's go ahead and check that right now. So you know how we do uh, foiling. We take the first term times the first term and then go on and, uh, and go in that manner. So here we go. We're going to have several terms to go through here. So that's going to be 2x4 plus 4x cubed plus 8x squared. Folks, make sure that you check me if I'm, you know, tell me if I'm making a mistake anywhere, plus 8x squared plus 13x. And then I'm going to multiply minus 2 by all of these terms. So minus 4x cubed minus 8x squared minus 16x minus 26 plus 21. All right, I kind of have to squeeze that in there at the end. Okay, let's see what we got now. We have the 2x4, that's still there. But it looks like the 4x cubes will cancel each other out, right? So this cancels that out. The 8x squared and the 8x squared cancel those out. The 13x minus the 16x, so well, that's just minus 3x, right? So these two give us the minus 3x. And the minus 21, sorry, the minus 26 plus 21 should be minus 5. 
Let's compare that to what we had in the first place. 2x4 minus 3x minus 4, 5. 2x4 minus 3x minus 5. Yes, okay, let's hear what that is. Yes, Janaya, go ahead, please. Oh, sure, can. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what I'm doing is, remember FOIL? So I'm taking this X, the first X that I'm pointing to right now. I think you can see my cursor. This is why I'm using um, this to do it. Multiplying it by the first term, then by the second term, then by the third, then by the fourth. So every, every one of these terms gets multiplied by X. So that's where the 2X4 came from. So X times 2X cubed is a 2X4. Agreed, Janaya? Okay, what's X times 4X squared? That's 8X cubed, right? And then the X times the X squared is 8X squared. And the X times the 13X, sorry, times the 13 is 13X. 13 then I multiplied everything by minus 2 next. So minus 2, so this is the next one. I take that times that and keep going with the minus 2. That gave me the other terms, but then plus 21 at the end. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay, you're welcome. You're welcome. And you know what? I, I admire people like Janaya who will always ask the questions while we're doing this so that we get clarification, right? I prefer that to people just sitting silently. All right. Okay. And then, of course, I reduce everything down. It turns out it's the same thing. It's the same as, not the same thing. It's, it gives you back the, 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 the dividend, is what I should say. It gives you back the dividend. Okay. So here's what I'm going to be asking you to do now, right? I kind of crowded it out a little bit, but I'd like you to try this question, right? Um, so I'm, I'm going to write it here on a on at the bottom of this same board. So rewrite it, right? And I'm going to give you a few minutes to try this using synthetic division. So let me write it out again. So x cubed plus x squared, x cubed plus x squared, Minus 22x minus 40. Minus 22x minus 40. Dividing everything by x plus 2. Okay, so, and we're back. We're back. Okay, so let's answer Noah's question. By the way, let me do a quick check in here. Harish. Harish, where are you at? Are you there? Where is Harish? Harish, are you back with us? Perfect. Okay. How about Kale? Kale? Check in for me, please, Kale. Where is Kale? Ah, good, good, good. That's what I like. When I call your name, you're ready to go. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Let me answer Noah's question. Is it possible to still use synthetic division when you have something other than one in front of the X? It is possible. You may not like this, so you may choose to go back with your regular long division. How do you get the right answers? Did I get the right answers now? Uh, Janai, I will have to go back and cut your board. So give me, let me, let me finish this up. Actually, you know what? We can go back and, and, and do that question with everybody in a minute. But let me do this one first. And then, I'll, then, then we can show what the right answer is for that one. Okay, so I'm dividing by 3x plus 2. So this is not the same as the one we did before. Because the one we did before, we just simply put the plus 2 on the side. Well, that's not going to work for this. So here's what we have to do. We take that 3x plus 2, and we divide both terms by 3. Why are we doing that? Because we want to get the x on its own, and that gives us plus 2 over 3 instead of 3x plus 2. So I'm dividing both terms by 3. So the 3x gets divided by 3. So whatever is in front of the x... I am dividing it out so that I can end up just with x. Now I can set up my columns. And unfortunately, it means we have a fraction. That fraction is 2 thirds. Remember that I don't change the sign. I know some people change the sign just now, but I don't change the sign. I keep the sign the way it is. But along the top, I'm going to do what I did before. Put the 6. There is a cubic term there is a, a, a order two term so i'm going to put that in as a one then i'm going to put the minus 14 then i'm going to put the minus six on the end okay so no need to put any zeros in here we just simply put the numbers out there because every term is represented a three a two a one and a constant 
bring down the six, right? Don't put the six in the middle column. That first column is black. So all I need is an arrow pointing down to the, the, to the first, uh, to the bottom row. So that's a six. Now, here's a part that I know some people are not going to like. Two thirds of six. Well, three into six is two. Two times two is four. And you can try that on your calculator if you're not comfortable working with fractions. We do the same thing. One minus four, of course, is minus three. Two thirds of minus three, three into minus three is minus one. Minus one times two is minus two. Now remember, I am subtracting. So minus 14 essentially plus two is minus 12. What do I have to do again? Two thirds of minus 12, so three into that's four minus eight. And then I have one more thing left to do, which is to take the minus six and minus the minus eight, which of course gives me positive two. So what does it look like I'm dealing with here? Well, I know what it looks like I'm dealing with. It looks like I'm dealing with six minus three minus 12 and a two. Not quite. <laughs> okay, this is why some of you might not like this. Because we divided by three at the beginning up here, right? When we started, we divided by three. Each of these also needs to be divided by three. So instead of being six, this one doesn't get divided. Okay, this one does not get divided. The remainder stays as it is. So what I really have here is two x squared minus x minus four plus the two over the, what is it? Three x plus two plus. 3x plus 2. Okay, and x is not equal to minus 2 over 3. All right, that's the thing that I'm saying is my restriction. All right, so it's a little bit different from the first one. The first one is that the first thing you have to do is you have to divide out the 3, and you have to divide by 3 at the end again. All right, and you're going to have that pesky fraction to work with. So some of you may not like this. Some of you may not like this. By the way, I'm on board six right now. If anybody wanted to go back and look at this one later on. Let me go back and answer Janaya's question. Let's see what we should have had for the one that we had before. All right. So let's quickly run back to that. And that was this question right here. So I'm going to put... The plus two on the side, positive two. Along the top, I'm going to put one, one, minus 22, and minus 40. There is no need for me to, why did I divide by three the first time? Oh, really? I divided by three because I, it, okay, I, I, I don't want to go back to that board right now. I divided by three because it was three X plus two, and I have to have X on its own. So I have to divide out the three. Okay, okay, really? That's what I'm saying. But if that's, if that's not something that you're, you're comfortable doing, then you can just use long division, just so you know. It's not that it's a requirement, but that's, that's how it's. Okay, so let's just, let's, let me just show you, uh, Janaya, what the answer should have been. I'm going to bring down the 1, so that's a 1 there. 2 times 1, of course, is 2, so that's minus 1, minus 1. 2 times minus 1 is minus 2, so this should be minus 20. Uh, let's just make sure, yeah, minus 22 plus 2 minus 20, and then this should be minus 40. So in fact, there is no remainder is what I'm noticing. That's why somebody was asking me that earlier on. So what this works out to be is, oh, I can't go down anymore. Interesting, I thought I could go all the way down. Anyway, this works out to be, uh, let's see, x squared, because remember I drop a degree, minus x minus 20, plus if you like zero over x plus two. Okay, not everybody got that. I remember now looking at some questions and I saw that not everybody got that. There, were, there still is a restriction that X cannot be equal to minus two. Okay, I think some people did get that answer, by the way. And so hopefully that helps you all. Janaya, did you come close, do you think? Is there anything different from what I did that, that you did? Okay, good, 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 good for you, good for you. All right, anybody who didn't get that answer, you can certainly hopefully see what I did that was different from what you did. Okay, 
So let me move on now. Let me move on now to board number, I guess number two up here. We talked about the remainder theorem before. And all the remainder theorem said is that if you wanted to know what the remainder was, that we put in the thing that made the divisor equal to zero. So that's, that's, that's what the remainder theorem says. From the remainder theorem, we have something called the factor theorem. So let me explain what the factor theorem says. The factor theorem says that if when you plug in that number that you're putting in to get the remainder, if that remainder is zero, then x minus that number that you put in is a factor of the function. So for instance, is x plus one a factor of, and this is very, very hard to read. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my browser window a little bit bigger. I know when I was resizing it before, it didn't work out so well. So let me try to make this a little bit bigger. You can hardly read this. Is x plus one a factor of, whoa, can hard to read. It looks like x squared plus x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x minus 6. I'm going to go with that's what it is, right? So if x plus 1 is a factor, it means that plugging in minus 1 into this should give me 0. So I'm going to go ahead and find the f of minus 1 because I'm saying I'm testing out that x plus 1 is a factor. So if x plus 1 is a factor, I should get 0 by plugging this in because that means the remainder is 0, right? So I'm going to plug that in. So I'm going to, that's equal to minus one cubed plus two times minus one squared minus five times minus one and then minus six. That's if I can just squeeze. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Try to get the minus six in there. All right. So minus six on top there. Okay. So let's see if I can do this in my head. No, it should, that shouldn't be too hard. It's just a minus one. So that's minus one. This should be plus two. And this should be uh, plus five. And then minus six. And by my math, that looks like seven uh, and minus seven. So that's equal to zero. So what that means is that x plus one is a factor. Right. If when I plug in that minus one into the function, I'm getting a zero, that means it's a factor, which also means, by the way, the question that we just did a few minutes ago, right, on board number six, whatever it was, that meant, in fact, let me go back to board six very quickly to show you what I'm, what I'm saying here. Just give me a second here to go to back. I think it was board six. I think it was board six. That means that this 3x plus 2 is, in fact, a factor of 6x cubed plus x squared minus x minus 6. Because if we plug the minus 2 or 3 into this, which you can try in a minute, we should get 0. Because that's why, oh, no, it wasn't this one. It wasn't this one. Sorry. It was the one that we did. That wasn't this one. It was the one that we touched on the same page that we're on. I'm, I'm making no sense at all. Sorry, folks. Uh, let's go back to the one that we were doing before on, on, on board 1. The x plus 2 here is a factor because when we put it in the table, we get a remainder of 0. That means that x plus 2 is, in fact, a factor of x cubed plus x squared minus 22x minus 40. That's what we're saying. All right. OK, so let me go back to board number 2 now. Sorry, I kind of confused you there a few minutes ago. So that means it's a factor. So let's find at least one factor of this function. Right? This is x to 5 minus 2x4 plus 3x to the power of 3 minus 6x squared minus 4x plus 8. So to find a factor, unfortunately, it's a trial and error thing. Right? It does mean that I just have to plug numbers in until I get 0, which is not always easy. And one of the things you're going to find when you're doing some of these factorings in a few minutes, unless there are any shortcuts, and I will show you one of the shortcuts, which is going to be on your homework, then it is kind of a, a, a tough slog sometimes. I'm going to try a few things. I'm going to try f of 1. So f of 1, and we'll see if x minus 1 is a factor, is 1 to the power of 5 minus 2 times. What, what, what makes 1 nice to work with is that it's just easy to, to compute. 1 to the power of 4 plus 3 times 1 to the power of 3 minus 6 times 1 squared minus 4 times 1 
plus 8. Now, you're always hoping that when you plug that first number in, you do in fact get 0 because that is one of your factors if that's the case. So let's see what this works out. That's 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 6 minus 4 plus 8. So let me add up all of my positives. I'm going to get 1 and 3, which is 4, plus 8, which is 12. Put up, add up all my negatives, minus 6, minus 4, and minus 2. That is equal to 0. So because 1 worked, x minus 1 is a factor. So we hit it out of the park on the first take. Just plugging in 1 into the function makes us get 0. So x minus that 1 is, in fact, a factor, okay? Now, you might be thinking, boy, that's a lot of numbers I had to try. What if 1 didn't work? Well, I would have got to minus 1 next. Does it always work? No, it doesn't always work. 1 doesn't always work because x plus 1 or x minus 1 isn't always a factor. So unfortunately, you're probably thinking, but I'm going to be trying a whole bunch of numbers. This could take forever. It could take a long time, but there is something called the integral zero theorem, which I'm going to show you how to reduce the number of numbers that you would try. The integral factors of the constant term are potential zeros of the part. That's what this says. The factors, the integral factors. Integers are whole numbers. So 2.5 is not an integer. 6.9 is not an integer. 2 over 3 is not an integer because those are not whole numbers. So when I'm looking at the factors of minus 6, which is what is in this function here, then it really restricts me only to these factors, plus and minus 1, plus and minus 2, plus and minus 3, plus and minus 6. I'm not going to try 5. 5 is not a factor of minus 6. I'm not going to try 4. 4 is not a factor of minus 6. I can try 1. I can try 2. I can try 3. I'm not going to try 5, and I'm not going to try 4, because those are not factors of minus 6. Notice, though, that I do try plus and minus 1. So apart from putting in plus 1 into the function, I should have, and if it didn't work, I would have tried minus 1 next. So, Elisa, unfortunately, no, 1 does not always work. But it is always going to be one factor of what this number is on the end. So this minus 6. And I'm going to be honest with you. Although I have to teach you and just mention to you the rational zero theorem, I never force you to have, actually have to use it. What the rational zero theorem says is that if there is if 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 there is a number in front of this x squared in this case or x cubed in this case, then you'd have to go further than just you can get factors of the last number. And I'll be honest with you, I'm never going to ask you to do that. So I'm just going to mention it in passing here. Whenever I give you one of these things to work with, it's always going to be it's always going to be a factor of whatever the constant is. I promise you that right? The, the rational zero theorem is just way too much work, and I would never do that to you. All right. So remember now, focus on this constant on the end, this six on the end, to figure out what numbers you should potentially try. And I'm going to promise you that I'm not going to make it more complicated than that. So let's try this for the first time. Fully factor this function. We're going to try to factor this. It's the same function we had before, it's a little bit clearer now than it was before. But we already have one of the factors. Let me remind you. We go back to board two for a second. It's the same function, x5, 2x4, et cetera, et cetera. All right, the same function we're pointing to right here. We said x plus 1 is a factor. Right? So we know that x plus 1 is a factor. But it's saying we have to fully factor it. Okay. So does getting the first factor help me out? Is there something I can do with that first factor that could help me to factor it some more? It's not a quadratic. If it was a quadratic, we wouldn't have a problem. Right? Quadratics, we just factored the way we did it in grade 10. It's a quartic function. But we know one of the factors is x plus 1. Does that help us to find the other factors? Is there something I can do that x plus 1 that could lead me to the other factors? Can anybody think of anything that I could do that x plus 1, which we know is a factor, to give us the other factors? Any thoughts, any ideas, anything that you think might help? Well, since I don't hear anybody saying anything, how about, since it's a factor, how about if I 
divide that x plus 1 using polynomial division or synthetic division into this. We know no, we should get a, uh, we should get as a divisor. Yes, no, that's right. That's exactly what I'm saying. We should end up with a remainder of 0 because it is a factor. So I'm going to go ahead and use synthetic division on this right now. All right. I'm going to go ahead and divide by the x plus 1. So I'm going to put the plus 1 on the side. So remember now that I need to have every single term represented. So I need to put a 1 here, a minus 2 there. Let me see, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Oh, so we have, every number is actually represented already. So 1 minus 2, uh, positive 3, minus 6, minus 4, and plus 8. So here's some more practice with this synthetic division that we just learned a while ago. One, just to make sure I put all the numbers in right. 1 minus 2, 3, minus 6, minus 4. Okay. Now, at the end of this, I should get a remainder of 0. If this really is a factor, I should get a remainder of 0. So let's see if this works. Bring that 1 down. Everybody should be experts at this by now. 1 times 1 is 1. Let's put that 1 there. Minus 2 minus 1, of course, is minus 3. 1 times minus 3 is minus 3. I'm subtracting. So 3 minus minus 3 is 6. 1 times 6 is 6. Minus 6 minus 6 is minus 12. 1 times minus 12 is minus 12. Minus 4 minus minus 8 is 8. 1 times 8 is 8, and that's convenient because, as you notice, when I subtract the 8 from the 8, I do, in fact, get a 0. So here's what we have so far. We should now drop a degree. We started off with x to the power of 5. So I'm going to go down to x to the power of 4 now. So x to the power of 4 minus 3x cubed plus 6x squared minus 12x plus 8. And really, since I know it's a factor, I could put that that gets multiplied by the x plus 1. What I'm saying is, remainder is 0. So that's really plus 0 times over x plus 1. So this is really not, this is, this is really not necessary for me to put that in, right? What I'm really trying to do is I'm trying to factor this. I'm going to, I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to erase this right here, right? What I'm going to do is I'm trying to write this thing so that it's now in factored form. And factored form means that the first factor we said was x plus 1. x plus 1 is a factor. And the other factor is this x4 minus 3x cubed plus 6x squared minus 12x plus 8. So I'm saying if I multiply these two things together, I should get back this quintic function that I have up here. Okay. So here's where we are now. x4 minus 3x cubed plus 6x squared minus 12x plus 8. It's still not fully factored. But we have the other factor that we would have had to multiply by x plus 1 to give us this quintic function up here. Okay. How can we factor this some more? Any suggestions as to how we can factor this some more? Any ideas? Any thoughts? Any, any strategies that you think we can use to factor this? Keep using factor theorem. Thank you, Noah. Does that make sense, everybody? We've got to find another number that gives us a zero when we plug it in. No. You're hoping that plus and minus one will work because it doesn't, we're gonna have to go further. But again, don't try any number. I'm not gonna try three. Why? Because three is not a factor of eight. I can try plus and minus two because that those are factors of eight. I'm not gonna try three. I can try four. I'm not gonna try five. I'm not gonna try six. I'm not gonna try seven. I could try eight, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping that I don't have to go that far because there's a lot of numbers to work with. I'm hoping that one or minus one or two or minus two and i don't have to go any further than that will work so let's start off with plugging in one into not the original function not going back up here but into this because what we're trying to do is factor this part again the, the quartic function is what we're trying to factor again the x4 etc etc okay so it looks like janaya has a question janaya please go ahead Okay, so what I was looking at 
is I was using that uh, factor theorem that we talked about before, the, the rational, sorry, the integral zero theorem, which says that when I'm looking for factors of this function I'm pointing to here, I should only focus on the constant and look for uh, numbers that are factors of that constant, because those are the only numbers that we should try. We shouldn't try five, because that's not a factor of eight. We shouldn't try six. We shouldn't try three, because those are not going to work. That's what we're saying. Okay, good. So let me come back to this. I'm going to try one again. I'm going to hope that maybe either one or minus one is going to work. So I'm going to plug one into this function here and see what happens this time. We, we, got, we got lucky with one the last time. So it's one to the power of four minus three times one cubed plus six times one squared minus 12 times one plus eight. Let's see if we're going to get lucky again. So this is 1 minus 3 plus 6 minus 12 plus 8. Could x minus, sorry, could x, um, oh, hold on a second. I just said something wrong, didn't I? We said x plus 1 is a factor. Okay, because we plugged in, huh, what did we, okay, let me just go back a second here. Yeah, we said x plus 1 is a because we plugged in, you know what I just realized? I did something wrong before right, let me go back here nobody said anything to me let me go back here for a second let me go back here for a second i said x minus one is a factor and or hold on hold on x minus one is a factor is what i said here and then i went ahead and nobody said anything to me about that all right i went ahead and i actually but I actually use x plus one as a factor. I should have said x minus one as a factor. So it turns out that x plus one is also a factor because we ended up with a zero here as well when we use x plus one. So what does it mean that I should have plugged in here for me to establish that x plus one is a factor? I should have plugged in minus one into the function. So I'm sorry about that. But let's just see if this works again. We're plugging in one again to see if this is going to work for the second time. I know that might be confusing some people there, but sorry about that. So let's see now. I have minus 3 and minus 12, which is minus 15. 8 and 6 is 14. So it turns out that for in this case, yeah, you know what? I, I kind of messed this up. I should not have used x plus 1. I should not have used x plus 1. You know what? Can we, can we, can you give me a, uh, a sort of a, uh, a, a bli in Jamaica, we call it a bligh. But now, so you give me a bligh on this one. I should not have used x plus one as a factor. Turns out that x plus one is a factor because I do get zero on the end. But let me back up, rewind, and fix this. And my apologies to you on this, right? I should have said x minus, because that's what we said on the previous page, right? Let me go back and show you again. We said that for this, x minus one is a factor, okay? So, I should have said, let me, let me fix this. Let me fix my error here. I'm going to go ahead and erase this, right? And everything here has to be erased as well. I'm going to erase all of this. I'm going to fix this. All right, I want to do this the right way. Okay. So let's put this in here. And it's minus one that should be a factor, not plus one. Okay. We still expect to get zero on the end. And I apologize for that. We'll, 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 we're we're going to fix this now. So we're going to bring down the one. So minus one times that gives us minus one. <clears throat> Excuse me. So x minus one is a factor. All right, so where am I now? So, okay, so minus two minus minus one is the same thing as minus two plus one, which is minus one. This becomes positive one. Three minus one is two. This is minus two. Six minus minus two is minus four. This becomes positive four. Minus four, that's minus eight. This becomes positive eight. Okay, folks, um, you, I, hopefully you can see where my error was by using the wrong factor. But at any rate, at any rate, let's just change this up now. I'm going to erase all of this stuff here. All this needs to go. All 
Come on, this eraser doesn't work very well. Come on, eraser, do your job. Okay, one more part right here. Okay, so what I should have had is x to the power of 4 minus x cubed minus 2x squared minus 4x minus 8, right? And that has a factor of it of x minus 1, right? So these two things now will multiply to give us the original thing that we had, which is the x5 minus 2x4 plus 3x cubed minus 6x squared minus 4x plus 8. x minus 1 is a factor. Okay, so remember that I got that by plugging in one and getting the answer. So I really should, let me let me erase all of this stuff under here. There's a lot of erasing that needs to be done. And we'll try to fix this. Okay, that's not the cleanest eraser in the world, folks. So what we're trying to do is to find, let me just erase this here. And one more thing, okay. So what we're trying to, and let me just erase this as well. Okay, what we're trying to do now, the positive two X, so did I do something else again now? Isn't it too? It is positive. Yes, thank you. I didn't mean to erase it. Yes, you're quite right. So positive one, minus one, positive two, minus four. Yeah, okay, great. Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. I appreciate that. I do appreciate that. Positive two X. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Good. All right, a lot of people were pointing that out and I just wasn't paying attention. Thank you very much, it is 2x squared. Okay, so let's see if we can do this without any more errors now. So we need to factor this again. So do we try one again? We could try one again. Maybe it's x minus one twice, that's possible. So we could try one again. Let's see if that works this time. So I'm gonna put in the one to the power of four minus one to the power of three plus two times one squared minus four times one minus eight. Okay. Okay, so this would be one minus one plus two minus four minus eight. And I'm gonna say this looks like this one isn't going to work. Why does it matter that we use x plus 1? Aren't they both factors? Could we have just continued? Yeah, you know what, Noah, you're right. But because I made the error, I just wanted to correct it because we had the wrong um, factor at that point, right? What I had here would, um, would, would, have been, would have been the right factor with x plus 1 on the side, not with x minus 1. So I just wanted to make sure that we, we kind of corrected the error that I made because it might have given people the wrong impression. I started off with x minus 1 and I somehow turned it into x plus 1. So. I, I just wanted to correct that. Okay. All right. So this doesn't work, but how about minus one? We kind of had a, a suspicion that minus one would have worked. So I'm going to erase all of this, or I'll just leave it there. Let's put minus one under it. Plug in minus one instead. So it's minus one to the power of four. Yeah, we know that x plus one is a factor because we just found that out in a, a few minutes ago. So uh, that's uh, minus one to the power of four. Where are we at now? Minus. One to the power, minus one to the power of three, uh, plus two times minus one squared, minus four times minus one, and then minus eight. And we're pretty confident that we're supposed to get uh, a zero from this. Let's just see if we do. So this is gonna be one. This is gonna be minus minus one, which is plus one. This is going to be plus 2, this is going to be plus 4, and minus 8. 
which is in fact equal to zero. Okay, so what that means is that x plus one is a factor, which we knew, right? By virtue of the mistake that I made earlier on, x plus one is a factor. So what we're going to do now is what we did before. We're going to divide this thing that we had, the x, the quartic function, by the x plus one. Okay, we're going to use synthetic division one more time. So I'm going to go ahead. And yes, this time, the plus one on the side does make sense because we say that x plus one is a factor. And along the top, I'm going to put the terms that come from that. One minus one, two minus four, and minus eight. One minus one, positive two, minus four, and minus eight. Minus four and minus eight. Okay, again, I'm expecting to get a zero at the end here. So bring the one down. This should give me one. Minus one minus one is minus two. This should be minus two. This should be four. And that's four. That's minus eight. That's minus eight. And that, of course, gives me the zero there. Okay, so here's what I have left at this point now. I know one of the factors. So I have two factors so far. I have x plus 1. I have x minus 1. Then I have this other factor here, which is going to be x cubed minus 2x squared minus 4x minus 8. Now, you're probably thinking, oh, I have to go through this all over again. Not so much. Because I'm going to show you a shortcut now. So far, we have three factors, the x plus 1, the x minus 1. And then we have this other cubic function, which still has to be factored some more. And I'm looking at it and thinking, do I have to find another number that makes this term here become 0? Is there another way that I could factor this? And that's what I'm going to be going on to in my next board. I'm going to come back to this. Right? On my next board, I'm going to take you up to something called factor by grouping. If it's a cubic function, if it passes a particular test, this is what your homework is going to be on, so please make sure that you're, you're following this very, very closely. If it's a cubic function and it has four terms in it, so as such as this one, if this first coefficient times this last coefficient is equal to these two middle coefficients, then you can factor by grouping. So in other words, if three times minus eight is equal to two times minus 12, which it is, because that's minus 24, equals minus 24. If it passes that test, you can factor by grouping. What is factor by grouping? Well, I'm gonna show you right now. Is there a common factor between the first two terms of this expression? So what I'm pointing to right here, is there a common factor between both of these terms, the 3x cubed and the 2x squared? Is there a common factor between them? And can you tell me what that common factor is? Is it x, not just x, not just x, Noah. What's the common, the highest common factor, not just x? It's x squared, there you go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna factor out that x squared out of those first two terms. What am I left with when I factor that out? Well, I'm left with x plus 2. 3x plus 2, sorry. Let me fix that. I've been making so many errors today. Let me fix that. So what I'm left with is 3x plus 2. Can we agree on that? Can everybody agree with me on that? Does that first step make sense? With x squared into 3x plus 2. Perfect. Okay. Let me do a quick check in here. <clears throat> okay. How about Kale? Kale, are you with me on that? Does that make sense to you, Kale? Where's Kale? K 
Kayla, have I, have I left you behind? Did I do something which, okay, are you, so you're good there, okay. What is the next common factor between the next two terms, between the minus 12x and the minus eight? What's the highest common factor between both of those two? Not just Kayla, but everybody else, share button, rel, minus four, good. When I factor out that minus four, I'm left with three x plus two. So that means I can factor this again, because if you notice, I have a common factor here and here, right? Both of those are common factors. I forget I can use a little color thing here to change my color a little bit. So these are common factors here. This thing here is a common factor between those two. I'll go back to black here. So I'm gonna say that the common factor is gonna be the three X plus two. And then what's left in the other bracket is the x squared minus 4. But wait, isn't this a difference of squares? So why don't I factor this again? So it's going to be 3x plus 2. And then x plus 2, x minus 2. So guess what? I just fully factored, as you just said, uh, no, a difference of squares. I've just fully factored that function. Let's try this one more time. We're going to go back to that other question in a minute. Let's try this one more time. Let's see if it passes the test first. Multiply the first 2 times the 27. So 2 times 27 is hopefully equal to minus 3 times minus 18. I need to know, I need to learn how to write actually. So this is 54. Turns out that this is also 54. So that means that we can factor by grouping again. So let's go back and try it on this one. What is the common factor between these two factors? Between the first two terms, I should say. What is the common factor? It's x squared again. So I'm going to put x squared here. And what's left behind when I factor out that x squared? What's the terms that are left behind? Not just Karis, but everybody else. What's left when I factor out that x squared? Divide both of those terms by x squared is what I mean. Divide this by x squared. Okay, let's see. Jeremiah, go ahead, Jeremiah. Okay. I think some of the people wanted to jump in as well. Go ahead, Jeremiah. Well done. So 2x minus 3. So what is the common factor between the next two terms, between the minus 18x and the plus 27? What's the common factor there? Can anybody think of what that common factor is? Look at those other two terms, minus 18x plus 27. Well, three works, but there's a higher common factor than three. How about the minus nine? There you go. And I would use minus nine rather than plus nine. So that's gonna give me two x minus three again. So that means that this is going to be a common factor of 2x minus 3. And then I'm going to end up with x squared minus 9, which again, if you remember what Noah said a few minutes ago, is a difference of squares. So I'm going to have 2x minus 3 and an x plus 3, x minus 3. That's what I have. Great. Can that help us out with the previous question? So that's done. Now here's where we are with the previous question so far, taking you back to this page. Here's where we have, we have x plus one, x minus one. We have x cubed minus two x squared minus four x minus eight. Can we possibly factor this using a factor by grouping? Let's multiply the minus eight by the one, which is minus eight. And then, oh, hold on. I thought we could do that. It's supposed to be giving us a, I, I thought I set this up so it could be done. Oh, this is a plus, this is a plus, there we go. That's my bad, all right, the part, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you, Harish, and thank you, Noah, yes. I don't know why I'm making all these errors, but that certainly, that certainly does change things. So that should be a plus four X. So. 
it does pass the test because one times minus eight gives us minus eight and minus, let me point to it here, and minus two times four also gives us minus eight. So we can factor by grouping. So let's try that right now, right? So we know the first two factors are already there. So the X plus one, we already have that, X minus one. But now we're gonna to try to find a common factor between these first two terms. And that common factor there is what? Between the first two terms of this. What's the common factor between the first two terms of x cubed minus 2x squared? What's that common factor? Anybody? What's the common factor between those two terms? Between the x cubed term to the x squared. Okay, so x squared. Let's put that in another bracket, in a square bracket. So x squared. And let's factor x squared out of the first two terms. I'm getting x minus 2. Hope everybody agrees with me on that. And what's the common factor between the next two terms, between the 4x and the minus 8? What's the common factor there? It's 4, so positive 4. And I'm going to get x minus 2. I'll put a square bracket on that. So looks like I'm running out of room on this page. Yeah, looks like I'm running out of room. <laughs> Um, let's see if I can just quickly squeeze this in here. So on the bottom line, I'm going to have the x plus 1, x minus 1. And then I'm going to have x squared plus 4 and then x minus 2. And guess what, folks? That's no fully factor. This is not x... Um, Sorry, I have something wrong here. X squared plus four. This is, I can't factor X squared plus four. If there's X squared minus four, I could factor that, but I can't factor that anymore. So this, what I have here on this last line, and unfortunately I can't go down anymore, is the fully factored version of this original quintic function. X5 minus two X4 plus three X cubed minus six X minus four X plus eight. Fully factored is this guy right here, x plus one, x minus one, x squared plus four, x minus two. We now have a way that we could actually draw this function. We now have a pretty good idea of what this function might look like. In fact, I'm gonna put a little thing on the side here, which is gonna be my sketch of the function, not gonna be anything particularly artistic. I know it has three zeros. It has a zero at plus one, and minus one. So plus one and minus one, and another zero at two. There's a quintic function. By the way, I know that from these factors. There are no zeros that come from x squared plus four. I can't get zero out of that factor, right? I can get a zero out of the first bracket, the second bracket, and the last bracket, but not the middle bracket. No, this is a quintic function. So a quintic function, let me go back and show you again. This quintic function needs to go, because it has a positive lead coefficient, needs to go from quadrant three to quadrant one. None of these are order two zeros. That's an order one zero, that's an order one zero, that's an order one zero. So that means that this function probably looks, I'll probably put a different color for that, probably looks, something like this all right i missed the two i missed the one it looks kind of cubic but it's not quite cubic right it looks kind of cubic i meant to go through the one so i'm in a position where i can actually sketch the function right i couldn't sketch a function in its original form i wouldn't know what to do with this function this x5 whatever whatever i can't i don't know what to do with that but once i've factored it I have a better idea of what this function looks like because I have some zeros. These factors of the function allow me to put some zeros in there. Okay, let me go back to my black. Okay. And that's the whole point of being able to factor a function because then we're in a position to see what that function maybe kind of looks like a little bit. Okay. All right. So let's see where we're at now. We've already done the factor by grouping. Okay, so let's see what we can do with this question. All right, take a deep breath. I know it looks a little scary when you see it like that, but it's not that bad. The forms used to make a large rectangular block of ice, 
come in different dimensions such that the volume of each block can be modeled by and they give you a volume function to represent what the volume is. Now that x there is just simply a particular value that will lead to whatever the volume is. Determine possible dimensions in terms of x in meters that result in this volume. It sounds to me, because we know what volume is, right? Volume is equal to length times width times height. If we could somehow factor this function, then I think we could probably put it into possible dimensions in terms of x. You can get one factor that represents the length, one factor that represents the width, and one factor that represents the height, then we should be able to come up with this thing and then get the dimensions when x is equal to 1.5. What's the length, what's the width, what's the height? So our goal right now is to factor this function, right? And the function is 3x cubed plus 2x squared minus 7x plus 2. That's what the function is. That's a cubic function. What would you suggest would be the first thing that we have to do in order to be able to factor it? Because that's our goal right now, folks, right? How do we factor this function? Any ideas from you? I don't have a wheel to spin today. I'm just asking for ideas. How do we even start to factor this? It's not a quadratic function. It's a cubic function, right? Don't we want rational zero theorem? Well, you know what, Noah, you're right. Technically, we should use the rational root uh, theorem. But I'm going to tell you right now that if we just focus on this two, it will be enough for us, right? Just focus on that two for now. Right? What are factors of the two? Well, luckily for us, there are only really two factors, plus and minus. We have plus and minus one and plus and minus two. In reality, Noah, there is another factor, which we'll, which we'll show you in a minute, which does sort of draw on that, um, the, 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 the rational roots, the rational zero theorem, but we don't need it. I'm telling you we don't need it because at least one of the factors is going to be a whole number. Okay? So where do we start? Where do we start? First class, you always focus on the constant. Yes, that's correct, Noah. We always focus on that constant. Constant is two. So that potentially gives us only two numbers to try. We can try the plus and minus of each one, but only two numbers to try. So one and minus one, two and minus two. And that's where I'm going to go next. I'm going to try those numbers out with this function. Let's find a V first of one. I always start with one. And I cross my fingers and hope that one is going to work. So 3 times 1 cubed plus 2 times 1 squared minus 7 times 1 plus 2. Let me just make sure I didn't make any mistakes already. 3, that's 1, that's 1, that's minus. Okay, good. I think we're good here. So that's equal to 3 plus, hold on, let me erase that. So that's equal to 3 plus 2 minus 7 plus 2. Well, what do we know? What do we know? 3 plus 2 is 5. 5 plus 2 is 7. 7 minus 7 is 0. That's good news, right? So what do we know is a factor right now? And I, I, I messed it up the last time when I was doing this. Hopefully, you're not going to mess it up this time. What is a factor of this function? Can anybody help me out with what is a factor of this function? Since one worked, what is a factor of this function? And one does work. Let me just double check. I didn't make any mistakes here. 3 times 1 cubed, 2. Uh, okay, so that's 3 plus 2 minus 7. Yeah, okay, so 1 does work. So Noah says x minus 1 is a factor. He's right. Therefore x minus 1 is a factor. Good. So if x minus 1 is a factor, how can we put that to good use in figuring out what the other factors are? We've got one factor so far. Not just Noah, no. Good, good, good. Yeah, use it as advisor. Thank you, Noah. Does that make sense to everybody, though? Right? That's okay, Noah. That's okay. Why is x minus 1 a factor if we use 1? Remember what we said originally, Rachel, that if I plug something into the function and get 0, then x minus that thing is a fact. That's what the fact theorem said. Okay? 
So if minus one had worked, then x plus one would be a factor. So it's always the opposite sign, in other words. Okay. So what do we do with that? Yes, we're going to do another division. We're going to do another division with x minus one. And so I'm going to put up my little synthetic division table. All right, put the minus one on the side. And I'm confident that if I did it, if I do it right, I should get a zero on the end. Put my numbers at the top, which should be, I have enough rows here. No, I don't have anything missing, right? It's three, two, one, zero. So it looks like I, I just have three, two. So everything seems to be there. So three, two, minus seven, and two. Three, two, minus seven, and two. All right, let me just make sure I got that down, down right. Three plus two minus seven and plus two. Three plus two minus seven. Okay, great. All right. Let's go ahead and do our division now. Bring down the three. All right. So one minus one times minus three, of course, is minus three. All right. Two minus minus three is five. Minus one times five is minus five. Minus seven plus five is minus two. That's a positive two. We get a zero. That's what we expect to get because we said that x minus 1 is a factor. So here we go. Here are our factors. x minus 1. Then the other factor would be the 3x squared plus 5x minus 2. So what I'm saying to you is this. Multiplying these two things together should give us back this thing up here. But of course, we should be factoring again, right? We should be factoring again. Now, the question is, does everybody in here know how to factor a function like that? I showed you the magic x method, I think I did, a couple of weeks ago, a couple of days ago. Does anybody remember how to factor 3x squared plus 5x minus 2? You, This is something that you should have done back in grade 10, right? So I, I shouldn't have to teach you that, but I will go ahead and use what I call the magic x method for those people who may don't remember how to do this. I'm going to actually draw an X. I think I showed this to this class. I know I showed it to one of my classes. Hopefully it was you. I'm going to put three times minus, which is minus six on top. Then I'm going to put the plus five at the bottom. Did I do this with this class before this magic X method of factoring a quadratic? I can't remember. Did I do it with this class? Does anybody remember me using this? I did not. Oh, okay. Well, you don't have to use this. Whatever method you use to factor quadratics before, I mean, go right ahead and do it. I, I'm not going to play the video for you right now, but there is a video which I could show you which demonstrates the method. But I'm going to demonstrate it for you right now myself. Right? I multiply the 3 and the minus 2. I put a minus 6 on the top. The 5 comes from the middle right here. So the, I'm just going through that again. 3 times minus 2 is minus 6. And the bottom number that I put down here is the middle number of 5. Then I have to find two numbers that multiply to give me minus 6. Same product and something that we've always done. Two numbers that multiply to give you minus six that added to give you five. Can anybody think of what those two numbers are? Multiply to give you minus six, add up to give you positive five. Go ahead, Jeremiah. Jeremiah, go ahead. Hmm, let me try those numbers. I'll try the numbers you just said. Three and positive two. That's what you're saying? Positive 3 and positive 2. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. I hold that thought though, Jeremiah. I'm looking for two numbers because those two numbers are not going to multiply to give me minus 6 because they're both positive numbers. So that's not going to give me minus 6. So what I'm looking for now, so hold, hold that thought, Jeremiah. I'm looking for two numbers that are going to multiply to give me minus 6, but add up to give me 5. So product and sum. Sort of like when you do a regular quadratic. Can anybody think of what those two numbers are? 3 and minus 2. I'll write that down and see if that works. That doesn't sum to 5, though. So that's not going to work, Noah. So let's try something else. Okay, look at what uh, Harish and a couple of other people are saying. I'm using combinations of 6. And, somebody said minus 6 and 1. I'm going to say it's the other way around, though. Right, I'm gonna say that what it is is positive six 
and minus one. Can we all agree on that? Positive six and minus one, right? Those two numbers will multiply, perfect, thank you, Joel. Those two numbers will multiply to give us the minus six, but I'll have to give us the five. Now, the next step is to divide. Again, you don't have to use this method if you don't like it. It's to divide these two numbers that we just came up with, with the lead coefficient. So this lead coefficient here is three. I'm gonna divide both of these numbers by three. Reduce both of the fractions down if they can be reduced. The minus one over three cannot be reduced. The six over three can to two over one. I'm ready to factor now. Here are my factors. Maybe you've not seen this before, but I'm gonna show you, it's very simple. I already have the factors. The bottom number gets multiplied by the X plus or minus the top number. So this is gonna be X, one X plus two. On the second one, I'm going to put 3 times x minus the top number of 1. So both numbers come from these fractions. The bottom times the x plus or minus the top. That's where the x plus 2 came from. The bottom times the x plus or minus the top. So that's where the 3x minus 1 came from. I think factoring by decomposition is easier. Well, no, that's what you should do then. Right? Whatever you, what, why did I divide by three? Because Kristen, that was the lead coefficient. I always divide by the lead. With the two numbers that I found, the six and the minus one, I divide them both by the lead coefficient of three and then reduce it down. Okay, that's why we divided by three. And thanks for the question, by the way. All right? But then reduce it down. And I see Noah saying he likes decomposition. Absolutely perfect. Use decomposition. Perfectly valid. Use decomposition. It works brilliantly. Right? If that's something you're, you're accustomed to using, then by all means. But I'm saying you at some point need to be able to factor like what I just did and get the result like what I just did. Whatever you want to use, decomposition, I've heard of Australian method as well. I call this the magic X from a video that I, um, I share in my class from time to time. But this is now fully factored. We have to find the first factor, which was the X minus one. And then this other part, which was quadratic, we could just simply factor it using whatever the methods are that we learn over the years. So this answers part B of part A of the question. Possible dimension in terms of x that result in this value. So the original function can be written this way. The v of x is now x minus 1. Instead of it being a cubic function with it multiplied out, I just simply put it in factored form. x minus 1, x plus 2, and 3x minus 1. Right? That's the factored form of the original function, which is a v of x function in this form. Now that allows us to answer the last part. What are the dimensions of the block of ice when x is equal to 1.5? So what we're saying is we can consider each of these to be one of the dimensions. Maybe this is the length. I don't think it really matters which one you call the length. This is like the width, and this is like the uh, height. Now, does it matter whether you call that the height or that the width? I don't really think it matters that much. Right? It's just dimensions. But I'm going to now see what this is when V is 1.5. So I'm just going to plug in 1.5 into the X for each one of these. So 1.5 minus 1, 1.5 plus 2, and 3 times 1.5. Sorry, let me erase that a little bit there. 3 times 1.5 minus 1. Okay, so let me see, do a little mental math here now. This would be 0 0.5. This would be 2.5. Oh, 3.5, sorry, that's wrong. 3.5, ah, let's erase that. This would be 3.5. And this would be 4.5 minus 1, which is 3.5 again. So to answer the question, the dimensions, let's say length. And again, it doesn't really matter which one you call length. Right? I'm going to put down the length, width, and height. Length is, actually, I put the longer one as 3.5. So length is 0 0.5. Or sorry, 3.5. What was in centimeters? Let's see what this was. Centimeters, right. 
3.5 centimeters. Let's say width is 3.5 centimeters. And let's say the height. is 0.5 centimeters. Okay, so factoring it was the was the key to this, right? Getting it in all of its factors was the key. And again, let me go through a couple of things here. Getting that first factor by plugging in something to try to get zero, by looking at that constant and thinking, what possible number should I use? So it turns out, yeah, to go back to what Noah's asking, the rational root theorem would have led us to also consider, remember one of the answers was, 1 over 3. 1 over 3 was one of the roots. If you factor it, you get 3x minus 1. So one of the roots, one of the things that would have given you 0 is 1 over 3, right? And the rational root theorem would have given you 1 over 3 as one of those numbers to track. But I don't want to do that to you. So I made it so that you could actually factor this by just simply using whole numbers, like, for instance, 1 and minus 2 and numbers like those. And there you go. Now that you have the dimensions in terms of x, you can actually figure out the length, the width, and the height.